Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Today is March the 13th, 2018. I'm making this video to respond to some of the comments from the video I made yesterday where I suggested that Mikey Garcia, one of the champs at 140 pounds, 38 and 0, four division champion, would be a competitive opponent for 147 pound champion Errol Spence, right? Who, of course, like Mikey, has a greater than 80% KO ratio, right? Both of these guys are two of the biggest hitters pound for pound in the sport. And like Mikey, Errol Spence is unbeaten, right? Let me also point out, too, that I'm aware of the fact that Errol Spence trains with people like Jamel Charlo, the champ at 154 pounds, and that Errol Spence himself is big for the 147 pound weight class. So, as you can imagine, right, many of you disagree with me. Let me point out that this is what my site's all about. I want people to view it as an online bar. We're all sitting around, we're talking boxing. Right? We're with other sports fans. We have differences of opinion. We'll respect everyone's opinion even when we disagree. We'll raise our points. And then, of course, we'll sit back and hope that the fight happens so we can find out how it goes. So among the comments that I've heard in response are that Mikey Garcia started out in a much lower weight class, right? That he started out in the 120s. How could a guy that small have a chance against a big, hard hitting welterweight champion, right? The feeling is, hey, he's too small. Let me respond to that. Have we already forgotten the work of Manny Pacquiao and Floyd Mayweather. Folks, understand, Pacquiao and Mayweather started out at much lighter weights. Floyd, I believe, around 130 pounds. Pacquiao even lighter than that, right? These men not only won the welterweight title, but understand Mayweather goes on to win the 154 pound title without a catch weight. Right, Pacquiao does win the 154-pound title against Antonio Margarito at a catch weight. But understand, these guys not only picked up welterweight titles, these guys went beyond the welterweight division. Right, even Pacquiao's catch weight fight for the 154-pound title was fought at a weight higher than 147 pounds. Now, Mikey Garcia, 38-0, four-division champ, in my opinion, is an elite fighter who needs to be considered the same way you consider a Manny Pacquiao and a Floyd Mayweather. Right? Garcia's elite. He's elite. I don't think his size, and he's 5'6", how tall is Manny Pacquiao, folks? I don't think his size would negate some of the advantages he would have against Errol Spence if he fights Spence for Spence's title at 147 pounds, right? Let's just say I'm not buying the argument that guys who start out at lighter weights necessarily can't compete at 147 pounds. Right? Let me also just add as an aside, right? Let's just remember different weights, but let's remember the careers of people like Thomas Hearns, right? Ray Leonard. I believe Ray Leonard beats, again, at a catch weight, 
beats the light heavyweight champion, Donnie Lalonde. Right, folks, that's one division up from where George Groves just fought Chris Eubank. Right, if you're a great fighter and you know how to avoid getting hit flush in fights and you have an offensive arsenal and you understand the sweet science, I think that could negate a size advantage. In fact, boxing history is replete with that happening. Let's talk about some of the other comments. Right? The idea is that Mikey Garcia's power has not carried to 140 pounds. Right? Some of the people here online have pointed out that Mikey has gone the distance twice at 140 pounds. Right? In his limited experience, Mikey's fights have made it into the 12th round. Right? And that that's shows a decrease in his punching power. Right? Adrian Broner goes a distance against him. Lipinets goes a distance against him. Now let me make a couple of points here. First, has anyone watching this video ever seen Adrian Broner move more on his back foot over 12 rounds? than he did against Mikey Garcia. Folks, look at that fight. Broner's on his bike. Right? Mikey's the hunter. Broner is the hunted. I know there are fights where Broner is brilliant from the pocket, but in that fight against Mikey Garcia, Broner comes in light voluntarily. Right? Comes in light and is moving away from Mikey Garcia, right? I thought Broner fought a survivalist fight. Let's also look a little bit more closely at Broner, right? Just understand that Adrian Broner has a great chin on him. Even when he hit the canvas against Marcus Maidana, he goes the distance in that fight. You're talking about a guy with a great Chin surviving against Mikey Garcia. Broner, by the way, has never been stopped in a fight. He's lost fights, but he's never been knocked out. The Lipinets fight, understand Lipinets hits the canvas in the fight. Right? It's not like Mikey's hitting Lipinets with his Sunday punch and Lipinets is just looking at him and saying, hey, Mikey, wrong division. Right? Lipinets hits the canvas, doesn't he? Let me point out, too, that Lipinets has never been stopped. Right, So I'm not sure if Mikey Garcia's power disappeared at 140. I get the feeling his power caused Broner to leave the pocket, dropped Lipinets, Maybe Mikey fought two guys with decent chins at 140 pounds. Let me say this too. There's the feeling that 147 is somehow just too far a trip for Mikey Garcia, right? Forget the fact that Garcia himself in two fights at 140 hasn't hit the canvas. It's not like Mikey's fighting with heavier guys and now suddenly looks completely overwhelmed. Far from it. Right? He's unbeaten in the two fights at 140. Well, let's think about 147 here for a moment. Right? Just understand that Broner, and I know his fight against Mikey was at 140. But did you know Broner? Well, let's remember, Broner was a welterweight champion, folks. Mikey Garcia has already beaten a guy who held a share of the title at 147. Right? Broner could have done, you know, what Canelo used to do, what Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. used to do, and gained a lot of weight after the weigh-in. Right? Isn't that a recurring theme in boxing? The guy shows up, he looks skeletal, makes weight, then he shows up fight night, doesn't even look the same. Has gained that much weight from the weigh-in. 
right? Broner held the belt at 147. Broner beat Pauli Malinaji at 147. Folks, that Broner Maidana fight, where Broner goes the distance against Marcus Maidana, gets dropped, gets dropped, but goes the distance. That fight's at 147. Right? So just understand. Garcia has already been in the ring in an official bout with a guy who held the title at 147. More importantly, in my opinion, most importantly, let me say this too before I leave Broner. Broner fought Adrian Granados, a rough guy, rough and tumble guy, at 147, didn't he? That's a rough and tumble bout that Broner wins. Right? So Broner, understand, he wasn't a visitor to 147. He's a guy who had multiple fights at 147, including some very tough brawl type fights. Right? I'm wondering myself, and this is from, I guess, the seat in front of my computer why Broner left welterweight to lose weight to fight at 140. If I were Broner with his skills, I'd be gaining weight, right? I'd be at 147 at a minimum. I'd be up at 154, quite frankly. I'm guessing Broner's a guy who likes steak, likes dessert, likes second servings. What's he doing starving himself to fight at 140? Well, anyway, more important than the fact that Garcia's already fought a guy who held a share of the title officially at welterweight is the fact that Mikey Garcia, right? Garcia fights Broner at 140, but Broner used to be the welterweight champ. Let's not forget that, right? More importantly, Mikey's fought another welterweight champion. The guy who knocked down Adrian Broner, Marcus Maidana. I posted the video of Broner against a hard hitting, hard hitting former welterweight champion, Marcus Maidana. Let's remember, Maidana drops Victor Ortiz. What was Maidana known for? Big puncher, brawler, Right? Blood and guts fighter. The one thing you knew you weren't going to see from Maidana in a fight was bashfulness. He was going to come across the ring and try to get on your side of the ring. I'm talking about an aggressive guy who once had a share of the welterweight title. And what you'll notice in the sparring session is that the guy on his front foot is Mikey Garcia. The guy who's pushing the action, the guy who's landing big punches, the guy who's straight accurate punches clearly give him the advantage over a hooking guy like Marcus Maidana is Mikey Garcia. And understand, the sparring sessions are from before Marcus Maidana's fights against Floyd Mayweather. Right? These sparring sessions are from a time where Mikey Garcia hadn't even gone up to 140 yet. And here he is against a guy who had a share of the welterweight title. And he has Marcus Maidana on his back foot. Now, I'll agree. I know I'm talking to the boxing hardcore. I'll agree, sparring's different than real life, right? Some of you have pointed out that, okay, Mikey looks good, but they're wearing headgear, right? And people have pointed out that against Errol Spence, he wouldn't be wearing headgear. Okay, that's fair, that's fair, right? But what I want people to realize is that Mikey, and again, guy with greater than 80% KO ratio, knows how to collapse the pocket 
and has faster hands than Errol Spence. Right? I want people to revisit the beginning rounds of Kell Brook against Errol Spence. Folks, Spence in those early rounds is at a hand speed advantage. Kell Brook looks good early. He looks good early. Right? Now, what I'm saying here is I would expect Mikey Garcia, who's already been in the ring with two guys who have held shares of the welterweight title. Right? I would expect Mikey Garcia to look good early against Errol Spence. Right? But understand the difference between Mikey Garcia and Kell Brook. Kell Brook uses his legs for defense. Right? Kell Brook is a guy who, you know, is blessed with great legs. He's moving around the ring. Right? He's faster foot speed wise than Golovkin, Errol Spence. But both Golovkin and Errol Spence knew that if they ran up to Kell Brook, if, if they cornered Kell Brook, Right? Kell Brook wasn't a guy who's going to strategically block shots in the pocket without clinching. Let's go back to the Kell Brook Sean Porter fight. Sean Porter jumps in the pocket. Kell Brook clinches him. Right? Kell Brook's a clincher up close. Right? Mikey Garcia up close is more like Badu Jack. He can fight you up close without clinching, right? Look at the Badu Jack, Nathan Cleverly fight. Both Badu Jack and Cleverly are fighting up close without clinching. I believe Paulie Malinaji mentions it on the telecast, right? Mikey Garcia wouldn't be trying to clinch Errol Spence. Rather, Mikey Garcia would be trying to chop him down. And all I'm saying is, don't sleep on Garcia's power. Right? It is an open question on whether his power carries to 147. Looking at his sparring session against Marcus Maidana, there is pop on his shots. Folks, just listen to the video. By the way, let me point out, the video starts with two guys wearing white. What you want to do is fast forward 45 seconds into the video. You're going to see Mikey Garcia in against Marcus Maidana. And Garcia is the guy on his front foot. And you're going to see a mind-blowingly fast straight right hand, right? That's a key punch against Errol Spence. It's mind-blowingly fast. You're also going to notice that Garcia has an excellent short left hook. Now, for those of you who feel Garcia can't take shots to the body, are you certain that Errol Spence is going to be able to find Mikey Garcia's body. I think it's one of the better fights that can be made, quite frankly. I understand at first glance, it looks like a small guy entering the big boys club at 147 pounds. Mikey Garcia's already been in the ring with two of the better guys at 147. If there's anything we've learned, from the Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao era. It's that skills can offset size. Right? That a Floyd Mayweather in against Marcus Maidana, who's physically bigger than him, muscles him over to the ropes, still has advantages. Right? Because Errol Spence throws punches at a hook, Right, And because Spence is excellent at pivoting and angles after throwing punches, 
But so is Mikey Garcia. Because Mikey throws excellent short punches that are straighter than Errol Spence's. The question for me is whether after a fast start where he has, or should I say while he has the hand speed advantage, it's whether Mikey Garcia can hurt Spence enough where Spence can't come back in the second two-thirds of the fight like he did against Kell Brook. Let me close by saying this. I want people to revisit, again, it's a styles make fights type thing. I want people to revisit Orlando Salido's challenge to Mikey Garcia. It's actually one of the better fights, right? Salido collapses the pocket. Understand, Salido's the guy who beats Lomachenko, right? He comes in, he collapses the pocket, he throws a lot of body shots on Lomachenko. That's how he beats Lomachenko, by collapsing the pocket, by not giving Lomachenko time to move, by taking out Lomachenko's rib cage and slowing him down. Now, I know Salito's much smaller than Errol Spence, but isn't that exactly what Errol Spence would try to do against Mikey Garcia? Right? How did Orlando Salito's effort work against Mikey Garcia? Right? Let me say this, too. I believe I made a video before the Mikey Garcia-Orlando Salito fight where I thought to myself, look, Salito has a real chance in this one. I was one of those who was disappointed. You might remember the way that fight ended. Right? Salito headbutts Mikey Garcia, who then has a broken nose and can't continue. So they go to the scorecards, and Mikey Garcia is ahead on the scorecards. Right? You might recall, I believe I made a post-fight video. If I made the video, it's up. Where I was upset with the ending of that fight. Understand, I've been on the other side of the play when it comes to Mikey Garcia. What I want people to do is to look at the timing Mikey Garcia uses against Orlando Salido to keep him from collapsing the pocket. This is a guy who collapsed the pocket against Lomachenko. Why wasn't he able to just run in and do the same thing against Mikey Garcia? It's because Garcia lifts his feet, he plays angles, he's shooting back heavy, short punches. Salido goes down against Mikey Garcia. Garcia has Salido walking into shots, right? Garcia has experience against guys trying to collapse the pocket. Understand, a guy like Adrian Broner, who's a master in the pocket, moved more against Mikey Garcia than he did against Marcus Maidana. Why was that? Right? I believe Mikey hits hard enough. If Mikey hits Errol Spence on the temple, like he hit Lipinets, the knockdown in the Lipinets fight, or on the chin, right? I'm not sure if Errol Spence will recover fully. I really am not. Now, there is a comment I do agree with. People have mentioned that Mikey got hit far too much by Lipinets, and I agree with that, right? Um, he's going to have to clean that up because he can't get hit that many times. I'll concede the point. He can't get hit that many times by Errol Spence and expect to make it 12 rounds, right? In other words, a Garcia-Spence fight, Garcia's really going to have to maximize the advantage he would have, and he would have an advantage, in my opinion, for the first four rounds, right? He's going to have to maximize it. Then he's going to have to defend himself better than he did against Lipinets. My point to you is simply, that's a competitive fight. 
right? Like the Luis Ortiz Wilder fight, I would expect Garcia to have a multiple round lead going into the fifth round of that fight, right? And let's just say Spence, like Orlando Salido, would have to be careful in trying to collapse the pocket because, in my opinion, Garcia has better timing than does Cal Brook. Anyway, that's how I see it. We can agree to disagree. That's what this site is all about, right? Let's, let's just share our views and stuff. My point to you, though, is let's not pretend that Mikey has never been in a ring with a 147-pounder, right? He's actually fought two guys who've had shares of the title at 147, right? He sparred with Maidana, understand his brother Robert, and I know many of you have pointed out Robert's hesitant to have Mikey in against welterweights, right? Um, his brother Robert is a superstar trainer. He used to be the trainer for Marcus Maidana, right? My point to you is Mikey has sparred with some of Robert's clients, including Marcus Maidana, let's remember for a while, Antonio Margarito was Robert Garcia's trainer, right? Just to understand professionally. He fought a former welterweight champion, Adrian Broner, and it was Broner who was on the move, not Garcia, right? Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Mikey obviously is intrigued by the idea of fighting Errol Spence. Let's understand where Mikey is in his career. He's already won the title in four weight classes. Folks, this is the victory lap part of a fighter's career, right? This is the part of the career where a Ray Robinson decides to fight light heavyweight champion Joey Maxa, right? This is a guy who's had a, a great career. He's an easy Hall of Famer. And now he is trying to challenge himself and push his legacy even further, right? Errol Spence is the big building. He's the big mountain, right? And like Miguel Cotto, that's the warrior mindset Mikey Garcia has. I think Mikey's looking at that mountain and he's thinking, I need to climb that, right? Maybe Robert Garcia is going to try to lock the door and not allow him to leave to go to the arena. But I have to say, Mikey has to be intrigued, especially when you look at that Marcus Maidana film and you see Mikey collapsing the pocket. He's able to land both hands, right? And when you think about the fact that Spence had problems with Kell Brook early. And when you think about the fact that Spence is not defensively blessed. People are talking about the shots Mikey took against Lippinets. Folks, tell me about the shots Spence took from Kell Brook. Let's just say Mikey would land. Right? The question is, okay, how potent is his power at 147? Right? That's the million dollar question we would only be able to find out on fight night. I will say this though. How many times did Chris Algieri hit the canvas against Manny Pacquiao? I know Pacquiao's an outsized puncher. Right? But this wouldn't be the first time a guy from the lighter weights had a punch that carried into heavier weights. Let's remember Sugar Ray Leonard. Right, who fought Hearns at Welter, drops light heavyweight champion Donnie Lalonde. I know it's at a catch weight, but hell, the catch weight, I believe, was 168 pounds. What was Ray Leonard doing up there? The answer was knocking down the bigger man. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your further comments in the comment section to this video. Again, thanks for stopping by.